In today's video, I draw lines of the pencil, play with the LEDs, mix silver paint, create some minor scratches, and cut out plastic antenna. Hello fellow modelers, you asked me many times for this type of model, therefore I decided to build a Gundam. I chose nice GM sniper in small 144 scale. I like this model because it has a decent color scheme and minimalistic shapes. I mean, if you compare it with the other Gundam models. And as you can see, the box is full of parts with a practical colorful manual. Honestly, I was surprised by the price of the kit because the quality of molds and use technology is outstanding. Actually, you can build the whole model without glue or paints because parts are molded from colored plastic and have a smart joints. I do not have any extra parts for this kit, expect new decals. It is a shame, but in the kit are only the stickers. The plastic is quite rigid, so handy are sharp side cutters for removing plastic parts from the sprue. Sometimes cut isn't perfectly clean, so essential is to remove residual plastic with a nail file. The plastic parts are molded from multi-part injection molds and therefore sometimes are mold lines on complex areas quite pronounced. You should try to remove them with a sandpaper or metal blade. I must say that the parts fit quite tight, but if you decide to paint and use glue for the model, then I recommend to make a joints weaker. It will be easier to take apart them during different steps. This line looks like a mold line, but if you add the second part, you would realize that this is part of the model. At least I will fill the seam line on the other side. Therefore, I recommend trying to assemble the whole model and decide then what parts need modifications or fill with a party. In the kit are four movable joints, rubber parts, so it is interesting. The whole model seems to me like a toy. You can play with it and probably it's a good for beginners. So it's payoff. In my case, not so much. I think it would be tricky to make a decent model from this. Here I have all parts, so let's start with plastic modeling. First, I have glue, so I do not need large ugly joints like here on the leg armor. I am removing them with a side cutters and cleaning plastic with a nail file. Then sometimes is functionality a little bit simplified and you can make parts more movable or independent to each other. I use super thin glue which evaporates on air very fast and creates a strong bond. You can also use a super glue, however it will be handy for already painted parts later. Then I have here some ugly seam lines which I'm filling with a party for plastic. The drying time is 4 or 5 hours, depends on layer thickness. Now I am removing excess party with a soft nail file. As you can see, the party nicely unified and fill gaps. The nail file left a lot of scratches, it is not a huge problem, but for final touch you can polish plastic with a super smooth file. It looks nice, but it is hard to see all imperfections on dull plastic, thus I am spraying over each part soft layer of primer, it will also nicely unify the surface. I thought that this line is part of the model, but there is nothing on the other side, so I guess I must fill it. Also, I think the gun scope now requires small improvement. Therefore, I'm drilling out small hole with ordinary drill bit. Also, the primer revealed me this mold line, which I forgot to remove. Okay, one part prepared for painting. Now the rest. You can attach parts with a cotton swab, toothpick, wooden skewers or clothes pegs. 
It allows comfortable handling during spraying of color or primer. Now when I have all parts unified with a primer, it's time for minor modifications and there will be a lot of them. You can start with rescribing panel lines. Some of them are not very pronounced, filled with a glue, putty or just missing. I'm going to use LEDs, so I'm drilling out small holes for them. And according to Gundam Wiki, VGM Sniper has built-in compound sensors with a specialized laser sensor powerful zoom cameras and image stabilizers for precision long-range targeting. So interesting, indeed. Another useful tool is a micro grinder. I use it for highlighting details but also for drilling or milling. I'm making all these details more or less randomly. I downloaded manual and pictures for large 100 scale GM sniper, which is more detailed but still not enough. I also bought another Ganda model from RG series which seems to me much better, so next time it'll be easier, or maybe not. kit is designed for playing, so some details are quite thick like this antenna, or whatever it is. I replace it with a metal tubes from hyponymic needles. The head looks much better, so now it only remains to upgrade the rest of the model. It was essential to modify the legs, which are in the kit very dull. Here is the test sample side by side. I think there should be more panel lines at least. It's a quite larger robot and the basic version looks too much monolithic. And also, if you make some extra details, it will be easier to paint it. I use for pan lines only two cheap tools, and it is a razor saw and Excel hobby blade. And of course, I use pencil for drawing of a sketch line, position, and symmetry. First, I'm making soft streak cut with a blade. You don't need even template or masking tape for short lines. And now I'm making line more pronounced with a razor saw. It is relatively simple, but sometimes you may miss the template line, and in this case you will need to fill the line with a party and start again. Therefore, it is better for more complex shapes to create a template from masking tape. The pan lines are nice, but it is better to create also some raised details like extra armor, some covers, etc. And for this I use an ordinary plastic sheets or profiles.
I know it is quite time consuming to create all the details, but I think it's worth it. It is funny if you compare it with the old one. The same thing I'm doing with the body and arms. The 144 scale is relatively small, but I have a micro drill bits of 0.3mm diameter, and with them I can drill out some air intakes or grills. Now I'm melting down plastic dust with a thin glue. You can make cheap puncture for circles from hypodermic needles. And when the work is done, I'm unifying parts again with a primer. It revealed me a lot of imperfections like inconsistent pan lines or dust on the surface. Okay, do not worry. The last improvement is minor battle damage. I'm making into the shield two direct hits. I drill out small holes and from epoxy putty create a damaged metal structure. It seems that everything is finally prepared for color painting. Ok, not so fast. I decided to make the model slightly weathered and the cool technique is chipping. You can make with it realistic sketches. I'm not expert at Ganda models, but I found that the robots were made from titanium and ceramic composite. So some heavy rust is not suitable this time. Therefore I am painting the base layer with a silver titanium paint. The paint has very dense consistency, so a lot of thinner is essential this time. The correct dilution depends on your airbrush setting, so you must simply try it. I do not use silver on the whole model, but only on legs and shield. Therefore I am painting the rest of the parts with a light and dark blue color as you are used to. It seems to me that silver paint is finally dry, so that I can use chipping varnish. It is basically varnish which can be diluted or wiped off with water. Try to apply only small amount of varnish and spray more layers instead. If you want to paint some metal in real, then you usually need some primer. In my case it is only imitation of primer. I use red brown paint. The reason for this is that scratches are simply more interesting if you will add more colors and layers. And again, two or three layers of a chipping varnish. It looks like an orange peel texture, but do not worry. It contains a lot of water, so the surface will be nicely smooth when it evaporates. And in the end, you can paint the final layer and shading as you are used to. It was more difficult than usual, but I hope you will also handle it. The paint job on the rest of the model is more straightforward. You can paint your model only with one shade. But then it will be no difference between pre-colored plastic from the kit and your paint job. So if you want to make your model just a little bit more interesting, I highly recommend paint subtle shading and highlights. Try to simply mix slightly lighter shade and spray it on the exposed areas. Then mix the second even brighter shade and repeat the whole process. And if you want to achieve sharper color contrast, you can use masking tape. It is suitable for sharp edges like here on the chest armor. And one more thing, it is important to use more thinner, otherwise the transition will not be smooth and with a lot of small splatters. 
This technique is super easy and the result looks more attractive and less uniform. Now I'm using the same shade also for light blue parts, but this time I'm painting artificial shading with it. If you want to mix lighter shade for light blue, you can add a few drops of a white paint. This is the result of a basic painting, so if you like clean models, you can consider this as done. However, I am not satisfied with this. It simply doesn't have any story behind, so I think it needs some damage. In Japan, they call the style wabi-sabi. In English, it roughly means the perfection is in the imperfection. The first step is scratching. Now you can nicely see the result of the different colors and chipping varnish layers, which I sprayed earlier. The whole process of scratching is super easy. You need to moisten the surface with water and with a toothpick or a hard paintbrush make uh, random scratches. I use for small details water-based acrylic colors from Revel, Vallejo or Citadel. They are resilient, odorless and usually with a good coverage properties. Now decals. However, it is essential to cover the whole model with a gloss varnish first. The water slide decals are usually printed on the clear film and thus on the clear coat the contrast will be less significant. And here is a lovely example how varnish can change color shade. The surface is nicely shiny, and that is what we need. I sprayed two layers, but it depends on how much diluted varnish is. Also, it fixes the chipping varnish, so you cannot make more scratches after this layer. But it is handy, because you don't need to worry that water slide decals will destroy your previous work. I do not have any scheme or references where to place each decal. So, I guess it depends only on your creativity. The GM Sniper was mass produced, so there was no single prototype. As you may have noticed, I'm using decals chemicals for better placement. The microset helps me to set decals to needed position, and Microsol will soften film on which is decal printed. Thus, the decals will nicely copy underlying shapes and details. In addition, you can place some tiny labels if you like small details. Ok, now fun with LEDs.
I bought this lovely micro pre-wired SMD diodes and I only connect them to the series, so it'll be for 6 or more volts power supply. You can't, of course, buy SMD diodes without wires, but it could be tricky to solver them because the dimensions of connections are smaller than 1mm. I'm fixing the position with the epoxy party. I tried one super glue, but it was a mess. It is cool how something so small can create so much light, almost like a magic. Also the wires are quite thin, so it is not difficult to install them to the body. Essential is to drill out a small hole for them. I have more intent with this model, maybe some diorama, who knows. Therefore I terminated wires under body armor. However, you can easily hide them to the legs if you want. Ok, back to the decals. It seems they are properly set and dry, but as you can see they are still very raised above the surface. Therefore I am spraying another two or three soft layers of a clear varnish over them and let varnish dry properly for 10 hours. The varnish created lovely uniform layer, which I can smooth with a sandpaper. Now the white logo looks like a sprayed and you cannot see any evidence of decals edges. Here is the difference before and after. The varnish has micro scratches after sanding, so you can seal the surface with another layer of a gloss or semi-gloss varnish. If you thought that it is all, then I must disappoint you. Weathering with scratches was only the beginning of the whole story, because now it's time for oil paints. Here is example what you can achieve only with a two paints and thinner. You can buy some washes or tons of weathering products, but easier and cheaper is to mix your own. I use oil paint and because the whole model is blue, I am mixing blue and brown paints with a white spirit thinner. You can use only brown, but the shade would be too pronounced. I'm using highly diluted oil paint for pan lines or other details. It will create sharp color contrast, artificial shading and some dirt this way. Now the surface has a lot of large ugly stains. I actually want stains, but less pronounced. So I'm not wiping off the color from the surface entirely, but instead blending stains with a thinner. The oil paint advantage but also disadvantage is drying time. In the soft layer it usually dries 2 or more days. The advantage is that you have plenty of time to paint all the details and if you don't like the result you can easily wipe color off with a thinner. The disadvantage is when you finish painting you must wait 2 days until you can continue. Also you can leave some panels dirtier. Thus the whole model will be optically less uniform and probably more interesting. This painting is fun because everyone can make 20 exactly same clean models, but with the weathering will be each one unique. I assembled the whole model again and realized that some parts would be better clean. It is only about personal preferences, feelings and probably mood. You can use for cleaning white spirit or enamel thinner. Now the last but not least minor scratches with acrylic paints. I already told you they are great for small details so therefore also for this. And the best for scratches is again 
the rule of two colors. I am painting the first layer with a light blue and then into the center some brown color. And that is all. Actually, it is my first Ganda model, so I struggled with the moving parts because I am used to making more static models. But I think the result is not the worst. However, I was surprised that it was actually interesting to build. Honestly, I am more fan of the Ghost in the Shell or Gunslinger Girls series. But after this model, I am looking forward to another Ganda models. So here is the presentation of the finished model. Thank you for watching and stay creative! Thank you.